どうも四代目とお見受けしますが今日はこちらに一体どんなご用すがいと話がしたいだがお前らの案内は無用だ Hello everyone welcome to another video As you saw from the title, we're talking about Yakuza Like a Dragon. Now, I've been sort of a fan of Yakuza for a while. And yes, while I haven't actually played the games, I thought they gave off a really good vibe. You know, I feel like the Yakuza series established what they wanted to with the series. You know, I feel like they stuck to a narrative. They, they wanted to go with a specific narrative and they stuck with it. You know, I think it's good that they add、uh, to the atmosphere. Because if you become accustomed to running around the same cities, eventually, if you continue playing the games, you'll know every corner, street shop, whatever there is, you know, even without the map.、Uh, a lot of fans think that it's a lazy design to just add to a city rather than putting you in a new city. But I think it's a smart decision from Sega, you know. I believe、uh, they know fans will have that continuous nostalgic feel of being in the same city, but at the same time, they won't have to spend extra money. So, in the process, it's a win win, especially for them. You know, rather than expanding the world, I feel like they populate the world with a lot of stuff to engage the actual person. And yes, some might say graphics play a big role in a video game, but to be honest, that it really doesn't. Developers' job is to give people what they pay for. So, say if I pay for a $60 game. I expect that game to be something that's gonna entertain me for a long time, for at least a good amount of time.、Uh, with that being said, I still think the graphics for this game are amazing. They look pretty insane. Anyway, I think、uh, that's what the Yakuza series does right, you know? They do a good job of getting people immersed in the story, and they give, they give people the experience to enjoy the world, not vastly, but rather condensely. You know, with all its side activities, mini games, and shops,、uh, Sure, you can't drive or kill people or really commit any sort of crime like the GTA games. But it definitely has its own perks. Anyway, before we get into Yakuza Like a Dragon、um, or Yakuza 7, whatever you guys want to call it, I'm sure you guys have a lot of catching up to do on the story. Um, so, because there's like seven other games. Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to be talking about the story, you know, extensively, just kind of a brief synopsis about each and every one of them. Kind of like the Half Life video, the Half Life Expectation vs. Reality video, so you guys can get up to speed on what's going on. If, however, you do want to skip this part, there should be a time on the,、uh, on the screen. So just skip to that time, and it should be to where I'm actually talking about the actual topic at hand. Let's see if this game can either live up to our expectations or become the shitty reality that we all expect. Yakuza is an action adventure beat em up video game franchise created, owned, and published by Sega. The series originated from Toshihiro Nagoshi's desire to create a game that would tell the way of life of the Yakuza. Nagoshi initially struggled to find a platform for the project until Sony showed interest in the prospect. All Yakuza games feature three distinct yet connected modes called Event, Adventure, and Battle. The main character randomly encounters foes on their path. Triggering an encounter battle. In fights, the player character uses hand to hand combat, using such skills as rush combos, grabs, throws, and finishing moves. And some games allow the player character to select from and use multiple fighting styles. Weapons and objects can also be wielded. Though firearms are rare, winning some of these battles can result in obtaining money or items, which can then be sold or used to purchase equipment or a variety of items in the shops. The series has a high number of entertaining sub stories, which often complement the main story. These give players extra XP. There are many mini games which range from activities like bowling, darts, and arcade games to much more complex ones like professions, which can take a number of hours over the course of several sessions to complete. Things like Coliseum fights, weapon or gear crafting, Club Sega, which is a virtual recreation. Of the real life Sega arcade chain that features activities such as UFO catchers, darts, and playable emulations of classic Sega arcade titles such as Fantasy Zone and Virtual Fighter. These available games differ with each series installment. The series primarily focuses on the Yakuza character Kazuma Kiryu from the Tojo clan, 
While Kiryu often assists the Tojo clan, the series has also featured him searching for another way of life, in the form of raising orphans. The gameplay of Yakuza has the player controlling Kiryu or another character depending on the title. In an open world where he can encounter an enemy or perform an activity in the city to obtain experience. The Yakuza games are primarily set in Kamurocho, a fictionalized version of the real life Kabukicho district in Tokyo. Throughout the series, characters visit other areas of Japan. The districts and towns in the games correlate to the appearance of each in real life during the year each game comes out, often being renovated and remodeled in new entries. Stores and buildings are often different from their real life counterparts, replacing them with real life products, placements, or plot important locations. The first game follows the story of Kazuma Kiryu, a former promising Yakuza who was released from a 10 year prison sentence in December of 2005, having taken the fall for his murder of his family patriarch to protect his sworn brother. The Tojo clan he was once a member of has had 10 billion yen stolen from their vault. That's approximately 100 million US dollars. The search for the money undertaken by the entire Japanese underworld results in Kiryu being forced back into the brutal lawless world of the Yakuza. A mysterious young girl would lead Kiryu to the answers of what's going on if he can keep her alive. Critical reception to Yakuza has been positive. Although there was some criticism of its clunky mechanics, the game has been well received for its presentation and story. Yakuza was a commercial success, selling over 1 million units and spawned an entire franchise of games. In 2006, Kazuma Kiryu has left his post as the chairman of the Tojo clan, Japan's most violent crime syndicate. When an all-out war erupts, Kiryu must return and uphold the honor of his former clan. With brutal clashes with the rival gangs, the police, and the Korean Mafia through the back alleys and neon lit nightclubs of Tokyo and Osaka. Yakuza 2 has several gameplay features over its predecessor. Sega wished to improve the fighting engine based on fan input to provide a more rich experience. The story was aimed to feature a deep adult love story, something not seen in the previous game. Additionally, for the western versions of the original Japanese audio, was kept in contrast to the previous game, which contained English audio. Critical reception to Yakuza 2 was positive with reviewers praising the presentation and the fighting system. A PlayStation 4 remake of the game Yakuza Kiwami 2 was released in 2017 and the Windows version of that remake was released on Steam May 9th, 2019. In March 2009, Kazuma Kiryu now runs the Morning Glory Orphanage in Okinawa where he raises nine children, including his surrogate daughter Haruka Saramura. When an impending business deal threatens to tear down the orphanage, Kiryu travels from the breaches of Okinawa to the darkest side of Tokyo. He is pulled back to the life he thought he left behind. Yakuza 3 also introduced a couple of new things to the game series, like Seamless Battle, which is a streaming database loading free system that allows the game to directly connect to the adventure mode and the battle mode without the usual black loading screen. They also added Chase Battles, which replaces the regular brawling with the running sequence set within a certain area, and it's the first time they gave people the option to go in and out of first person view. If that wasn't enough, Yakuza 3 also introduced PlayStation Network trophies to the series. The game was awarded the prize for the high quality of entertainment. Yakuza 3 also earned SCEJ's PlayStation Award in 2009, a gold prize for achieving more than 500,000 sales in the Japanese market. The game then received a remastered version of Yakuza 3 for the PlayStation 4 and it was released on August 9th, 2018 in Japan and August 20th, 2019 in the US. In March 2010, Kazuma Kiryu is again involved in the incident in the Komorochu. First, a man is fatally shot on the turf of a powerful Tojo clan. Then a man investigating the murder is stabbed to death. These events spark a full-blown struggle for money, power, and above all, honor, in a story that is experienced through the eyes of four characters. This was the first Yakuza game that did not feature the involvement of the current series producer and one of the members involved since the first game, Daisuke Sato. Yakuza 4 received mostly positive reviews from critics. 
The game received an award for excellence at the 2010 Japan Game Awards. A remaster was then released on the PlayStation 4 on January 17, 2019 in Japan and worldwide on October 29, 2019 as a part of the Yakuza Remastered Collection. In December 2012, the seventh chairman of the Omi Alliance is on his deathbed. His death would end the truce between the Tojo clan and the Omi Alliance, leading to a war between the clans. To prepare, the Tojo clan is forced to strengthen their organization by aligning themselves with older clans based on other major cities across Japan to create a new organization rivaling that of the Omi Alliance. This new alliance would breach the old traditional barriers of the clan territories, leading to Daigo Dojima to head for Fukuoka. The game featured a new graphics engine unlike previous games in the series that have been reutilizing the same engine. Also for the first time in the series, it featured five settings across Japan, along with five playable main characters. Yakuza 5 received generally positive reviews in the Western territories, while receiving critical acclaim in Japan. It holds a score of 83 out of 100 on Metacritic. The game also sold for 590,000 copies by April 2013. In Japan, approximately 21,047 physical units for the PlayStation 4 was sold during its PS4 release launch week, becoming the second best-selling game of any format. In December of 1988, many years before the original Yakuza, a young Kazuma Kiryu is framed for the murder of a civilian, leading him to be hunted by the members of the Tojo clan. At the same time, Goro Mishima finds himself protecting a helpless blind girl, whom he was ordered to assassinate, making him a target himself. The two must each attempt to protect themselves and uncover the truth, including how both incidents are tied to the mysterious empty lot. Yakuza 0 received generally favorable reviews from critics. The game debuted as number one on the Japan software chart in its first week of release. The PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 versions sold 146,000 units and 90,000 sales, respectively. In the UK, Yakuza 0 was the 8th top-selling game in the week of January 28th. Stock for the game was running low, which indicated the game sold beyond expectations. In 2016, after willingly spending three years in prison for his past crimes, Kazuma Kiryu is released only to discover that his adoptive daughter, Haruka, has disappeared, later found in comatose and critically injured after a hit-and-run incident. A devastated Kiryu decides to travel to Anamochi, Jingacho, Hiroshima, hoping to find the truth behind what happened to Haruka. Yakuza 6 received generally favorable reviews from critics. The game was nominated for Best Storytelling and PlayStation Game of the Year at the 2018 Golden Joystick Awards and for the Tin Pin Alley Award for Best Music in a Game at the New York Game Awards. Now, with that knowledge, hopefully you guys will have a little bit of understanding uh, when going into uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Hopefully you can fully uh, and truly understand and follow along as I explain to you why I think Yakuza Like a Dragon might either be or live up to our expectations or become a reality. It is the eighth main release in the Yakuza series and is often referred to as Yakuza 7. The game is featuring a new protagonist and a change in the gameplay genre department. Yakuza Like a Dragon, the developers are saying the game can be considered a soft reboot of the series. For the first time in the Yakuza series, the focus shifts away from Tokyo and the game's fictional recreation of Kabukicho called Kamurocho instead. Most of the gameplay takes place in the Yakahomo district of Izaki Injicho, which is based on Yokohama's real life Izizachio district. However, Kumurocho and the Osaka district Sotenbori, another area from previous Yakuza games, based on the real life Dantobori district will be featured in the game. Yakuza Like a Dragon is also the first main game not to have Kazuma Kiryu as its main protagonist. It's introducing a new character, Ichiban Kasuga, which a lot of fans know him from the Yakuza Online card game. Instead, Sega have described Kasuga as being much more outspoken and emotive than Kiryu. In the year 2001, Ichiban Kasuga, a member of the Tojo clan's Arakawa family, is asked by the family's patriarch, Masumi, 
Arakawa to go to the prison for a murder that he didn't commit, hoping that this will make him a hero in the Tojo clan. Alongside Kasuga, other characters that can be recruited to the player's party include Namba Koichi, Adaichi, and Seiko Mokauda. Mokauda is the first female fighting character in the Yakuza series who is directly controlled by the player. Previous Yakuza series protagonist Kazuma Kiryu also makes an appearance in the game, alongside Goro Majima and Taiga Sejima, supposedly as main bosses initially and then as party assists later on. Another departure from previous Yakuza games is the battle system. Instead of the real-time beat-em-up mechanics of previous games, Yakuza Like a Dragon features turn-based RPG-type combat with four-person battle team. Sega have said they wanted to try a different style of gameplay, but that if it is badly received, they will return to the real-time combat for future games. Now, supposedly, Yakuza Like a Dragon was already rewarded um, a Japan Game Award, Award for Excellence in the Future Division at the Tokyo Game Show 2019. So it already sees its, its success. The game um, also was already released in Japan, China, and Korea. Uh, the first review of the game has uh, come in from uh, Famitsu, I think it is. And supposedly, he's got some really good uh, ratings. He's uh, rated it. Uh, two scores he gave it. One was a 9 out of 10, and the other being a 10 out of 10. For a collective score of 38 out of 40. The review praises the game's combat and system, which is radically different from what Yakuza fans are used to. Uh, mentioning that though it starts off slow, the gradual addition of the new elements helps bring the game to life. Yokohama, which replaces Kamurocho as the series' main setting, is also praised while the review also notes that the new protagonist, Ichiban Kasuga, brings a lot more humor to the story than ever before. As per the review, the main story is roughly uh, around 30 hours long, he said. While people who actually want to complete everything, actual completionists in this game, will end up getting probably about 100 hours out of the game. Um, so far, Yakuza Like a Dragon was also the best-selling game during its first four days uh, on sale in Japan, with 156,993 retail copies being sold. I mean, that's just from one source, uh, not to mention, uh, come on, uh, it's the best-selling game within Japan, but Japan has no other games out there. So, I wouldn't be that impressed if I were you. Now, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I don't mean any of that. But what I think is, I think the developers are doing a, a very smart thing in this situation, you know. They've been sticking to the same process for about a good duration now, since 2005. So yeah, about 15 years now. And they haven't really gone outside their comfort zone. In previous adaptations, I feel like, you know, the game's world, they just added extensions here and there. You know, the small size still attained its small size. They did a good job entertaining people throughout the story and keeping the mini games, but that's within their realm of good. You know, they didn't step outside of that. And granted, they may have finished off Kazuma Kiryu's story, but I doubt that's the reason they're going through all these drastic changes. You know, I feel you can only keep walking in a straight path for so long. And I think they know that. So they're trying to keep the game fresh by adding a new round based combat, you know, a system which is said to be almost identical to a Dragon Quest game, well, at least in that aspect. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know, that's a good to be branching out to a certain level. Um, <clears throat> you must be wondering if it plays it like a Dragon Quest game. Then shouldn't I have companions? Yes, I probably explained it to you in the description, but I'll explain it again. You also have companions in this game with it being a round based combat. I think that's going to be the most difficult uh, part for people to get accustomed to. You know, the, having the whole leisure of walking and fighting, you know, the, the fighting is probably one of the funnest parts in the game because it's, it's unorthodox, unlike a GTA where you just smack them one time and they're on the ground. But no, this series has never been like that. And from them taking a change to retain a lot of that leisure, it's probably going to hurt it in the long run. So when I say they're being smart, you know, them just releasing it uh, in Japan, China and Korea, you know, those may be big countries, but the player base, I doubt is anywhere near as a, well, granted, they do have a pretty big fan base in Japan and in uh, China and Korea, I'm sure. But I think a lot of those sales as well come from the US and they're going to release the game worldwide. So before they do that, they want to test it out in a small populated 
you know area condensed where they can see a lot of what goes on and how it all works out and i think um they're trying to see how this plays out first how the turn-based combat works how the story and everything they've incorporated goes on you know how the new system plays out and if it works well then you know they go ahead and release it worldwide like intended if it doesn't they fix those bugs it's a pretty smart um you know strategy they have going you know i mean i don't think anything they've done so far is bad uh switching up the um new protagonists you know they finished actual kazuma's storyline so now switching it up with the uh, ichiban uh, a lot of people think he's more likable anyway even though he's only been in the card game, a lot of people think he's more eccentric. You know, he's a lot less conventional than Kazuma, which is different. You know, and they've also expanded the world, which is said to be around three times bigger. And which, if it's three times bigger, it's probably going to house three times as more factions and enemies. Uh, which is another plus, you know, more content. Uh, speaking of content, there's supposed to be a new kart racing style minigame, along with uh, some karaoke and a bunch of other minigames. Which is pretty damn cool to hear because I have loads of memories of playing a, a, of karting in Mario Go Kart, and I have some memories of karaoke and uh, Sleeping Dogs. So they've always had mini games, and adding new ones like the racing carts, I think is going to be a great addition to it. Overall, I think the game is actually branching out. You know, I think it's finally stepped outside of its comfort zone in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's still doing it in a way that it won't jeopardize the whole franchise. Uh, for instance, seeing how the game does in its own markets, uh, then probably fixing whatever it needs to be fixed, or clearing up any complaints before it goes worldwide is a smart move, like I just said. Um, I think it's really good to see a game that has gone uh, on this long and it still wants to improve. You know, it wants to keep the story fresh. It wants to kind of just change the environment. And that's not easy to do, taking that risk. And they're doing it. And I think that's uh, something we all can be proud of and kind of clap our hands to, especially something that's been... We've had, what, seven games in the past 15 years. That's pretty damn good. That's a lot of titles. More than we can say for a lot of games. Granted, they might not all seem like AAA games, but they are fun. So if you ask me, will this game live up to expectation? I say it will, because they're taking a step forward for the franchise. And what they do now will have a big outlook on the future. And I think they know that. And rather than playing it safe, they're taking some risks. They're actually throwing this and that out there, along with keeping their foundation. You know, they've gone about it in the best way possible. And I can only hope that they achieve what they're trying to achieve. In any case, that's just my opinion. I mean, they got a whole lot of gameplays out there That's that uh, of the game being released in Japan. They have some demos released. So it's all over the web. It's all over YouTube. If you don't take my opinion for it or like my opinion, just go look it up on YouTube and see what you see from the game there see how you like it however once you do see what you see from the game and have your opinions come back here and write your opinions down in the comments below <laughs> as long as you comment it here i'm good no i'm joking i hope you guys enjoyed the video um if you did please like and subscribe i have quite a bit of other videos on my channel worth watching so if you're interested feel free to check it out and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time.